Yo, what up? Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Go Bruins. Today, I want to talk about Candida. Now, there's so much out there on Candida. The unfortunate thing is, all the information out there is by, I think it's Doug Kaufman or David Kaufman. I don't see my books. It's one or the other. And Dr. Simoncini from Italy on Candida, which I'm not a doctor. Uh, I haven't done research on Candida. I mean, except for with my clients all over the world, but... I haven't done lab research, you know, so I'm not saying they're wrong in a sense. You know, I, I do this stuff to share. I just want to give you an, a different school of thought so you can start thinking outside the box. Because to me, those books and their research is all based on dysfunction, candida overgrowth. And we really have to look at the function of the body to understand the body because 45 to 65 percent of the GI tract is actually candida. You cannot kill candida. If you kill or completely eradicate candida, you're actually killing yourself. And you're creating such immune system suppression that you will essentially die. So you can't kill it. It's a part of you. It's symbiotically a part of you for specific reasons. Now we have to look at the normal, the way it actually works in the body or why it's there. And maybe why if you become overgrown, what is exactly the problem? Now, of course, if you read their work on the fungal link, they talk about how in order to kill candida, uh, well, they believe that everything causes candida. You get a hangnail, it's from candida. You sneezing, it's from candida. You have gut problems, it's from candida. Everything's candida, which I don't really believe in. Candida is a sign of something else. It's the, it's the branch to a deeper-rooted issues, which is usually an immune system dysfunction. And research shows that in regards to hypothyroid people, hypothyroid people actually have low sagate production in their gut, which actually makes them more susceptible to getting candida overgrowth. So, I forget where I was going with this. Oh, so if we look at their diet, the only problem with this is they, take, they talk about cutting out mostly all carbohydrates and sugar to starve candida. Now, the first problem with this is a developing embryo and a developing fetus actually need sugar to thrive and grow. Your cell's primary source of fuel is sugar to produce energy in the body, store the hormones, etc. Your central nervous system is dependent on sugar. Your thyroid and your thymus is dependent metabolically on sugar to produce thyroid hormone as well as your liver. A lot of the enzymes in the liver are actually dependent on sugar. So why would we cut sugar out? Now they say sugar, or I should say candida like most people say, <coughs> cancer feeds on sugar. Well, the problem is we have to look at this with candida. Do candida feed on sugar? Yes, they do. It's the normal food. It's what they eat. It's what they eat to actually regulate themselves, just like you eat food. So we'd say if you got overgrown and you got overweight, would we cut out all food to make you lose weight? No, that would be actually devitalizing to your human body. You wouldn't survive. Same thing with sugar. I'm sorry, same thing with candida. And the more you cut out sugar, the more you starve candida with what they actually feed on, the more, in a sense, pissed off they get. Like, if you were in my office right now, I said, you have to be here for the next six months, and I'm not going to feed you. What would you do? you try to run out of here and be pissed off and try, and try to find some food. Same thing with candida. The more you starve them, the more you piss them off, the more they're going to grow and project their filaments elsewhere to try to find sugar. Now, according to their philosophy, candida feeds on sugar. But if we look at this, most people are eating you know, high fructose corn syrup, you know, box foods, refined foods, they're not eating good food frequencies, their ratios are off, they're not eating digestible uh, carbohydrates, they're not eating the right types of carbohydrates, they're eating inflammatory um, proteins, they're eating a diet high in unsaturated fats, they're estrogen dominant. All these things can actually starve candida and actually cause its overgrowth. And at the same time, all these things cause a stress reaction in the body or inflammation. And in a simplistic sense, what this does is it actually causes cortisol to increase because the more hypometabolic we are, we waste glucose. And our body needs this so we don't actually die or go into a coma. So you actually break down muscle tissue or protein to produce sugar in the body so we can actually survive. And that actually feeds candida dysfunctionally. So when they say candida feeds on sugar, to me they're looking at the dysfunction of it instead of actually looking at the function of how candida works. Now, i got some notes here. I want to go over with you guys so you can understand this. As I mentioned, candida, or as I say, sugar is not the root cause of a candida overgrowth. Typically, lack of sugar, when I say sugar, I mean the right types of digestible carbohydrates, are actually 
or lack of them, are actually very suppressive to the immune system. So the more we eat them, the more we upregulate our immune system, the less susceptible we are to a candida overgrowth. Now, as I mentioned, anytime the body's stressed, poor food frequency, blood sugar handling issues, you release cortisol. Now, cortisol is not bad. It's a part of you. It regulates inflammation and blood sugar and all these different things. But in excess, or I should say in homeostasis, it actually regulates an immunoglobulin in the gut called secretory IgA or Sig A. It's found mostly, it's found all over the body. It's not inflammatory. It's mostly found in the GALT system in the small intestine, gut-associated lymphoid tissue, which over 70% of or 80% of your immune system is actually in. So cortisol helps regulate that. But in excess, if we're producing excess cortisol, and we're constantly pumping out cortisol and adrenaline because we're in a hypometabolic state, cortisol and adrenaline have actually been shown to downregulate Sig A production. Now, if we downregulate Sig A production, we actually increase our risk for infection and at the same time allow candida to overgrow. Now, normally, candida actually, let me look at my notes here, candida emits an ethanol um, in a homeostatic state. It emits an ethanol uh, secretion, which actually keeps it quite happy. But anytime you're thyroid deficient, the antibodies you need, which are regulated, the thyroid regulates the thymus antibody. So if you're hypothyroid in a sense, or your thyroid's deficient, now the antibodies are actually not regulating, you produce a lot of anti-antibodies. But at the same time, if you don't have the antibodies to protect yourself, you put yourself at more risk for a candida overgrowth, or to be affected by the aldehyde secretion of the pissed off candida. So when they get pissed off, they actually emit an aldehyde secretion. And this actually, this aldehyde secretion in the small intestine causes the epithelial cells in the small intestine to shrink. Now these epithelial cells are very important. And the problem with this, when they shrink, of course you're going to get more susceptibility to infection, bacterial overgrowth, you're going to have um, you know, leaky gut syndrome, malabsorption, you're going to end up with an overstressed immune system, and in time end up with immune system suppression. But at the same time, these you know, toxins from, because when they shrink the um, epithelial cells uh, in the small intestine, it causes other toxins, endotoxins, um, uh, toxins from food, nitrous oxide, all these different inflammatory markers, and from the foods that you eat, and from the, the byproducts from the food just sitting there, actually make their way into the blood. Now, the problem with this is, Anytime candida gets pissed off and it releases this aldehyde secretion, it shrinks the epithelial cells. And what it does is it actually emits almost like these finger-like projections or filaments through the small intestine to other places in the body to try to find sugar. And this is what causes the candida overgrowth. And this is actually what causes you to develop food intolerances and things like this and leaky gut syndrome and malabsorption. Because now you're creating, in a sense, I'll simplify it, little small cracks in the small intestine. So instead of absorbing your food, or, you know, eliminating the toxins that are being built up, they actually make their way into the blood, which actually causes immune system reaction. So the goal is to keep candida happy, releasing this ethanol secretion. And any time we become hypometabolic, or excess cortisol, we actually piss candida off. Now it doesn't produce this normal ethanol secretion, it produces an aldehyde secretion, which shrinks the epithelial cells in the small intestine, which actually perpetuates the dysfunction that we think is a dysfunction and causes the candida or yeast overgrowth. Now, a lot of people think that candida feeds on sugar. It does homeostatically. But being hypometabolic, number one, a diet high in unsaturated fats, number two, and being estrogen dominant from oversynthesizing progesterone, you know, from being chronically stressed, being low in progesterone, maybe from being in menopause, not being able to detoxify estrogen um, because we have a diet that's low in protein or the liver's overburdened for some reason or another and it can't detoxify estrogen. Not regulating blood sugar will actually increase estrogen levels in the body. Anytime insulin and cortisol go up, estrogen go up. Anytime endotoxin production in the gut goes up from inflammation, estrogen goes up. So all these things can actually feed candida. Because candida actually feeds and thrives on unsaturated fats and estrogen. 
Now, a lot of people think you actually need to eradicate candida to get healthy. No, it's about controlling candida with the right foods and upregulating the immune system through upregulating your nutrition, your frequencies, digestible foods to upregulate metabolism, upregulate the immune system, and allow candida to kind of come back and say, hmm, happy now. I'm getting exactly what I need to thrive. I don't have to go elsewhere to find what I actually need to feed on. <clears throat> a lot of people think you actually need to take supplements to eradicate candida. Now, I'm not saying that at one time I didn't use supplements. I did. But I have to be honest with you, with the diet, the supplements, it was really hard for people. It's expensive. And, you know, 50% of the time it worked for that short period of time, and 50% of the time it didn't work. I have to be honest, over the past couple of years, we don't use any supplements with people, maybe one small supplement occasionally if people have thrush or severe candida overgrowth or getting it in their ears and things like that. We don't use any supplements. We use digestible foods, non-inflammatory proteins, digestible carbohydrates, saturated fats, food frequencies, and looking at people's logs to get the right food ratios for that person at each meal and at the end of the day to meet their metabolic needs. So we've actually used food and we've actually increased their sugar intake with tropical fruits and below ground vegetables and actually been able to control the candida from actually being overgrown. Another sign of a candida overgrowth is actually thrush. A lot of people get it in their mouth and this is because you actually have SIG-A in your mouth, the secretory IgA, and anytime it goes down you put yourself in the membranes of your body um, under more susceptibility to infection. Now what do you do if you get candida? Well, of course, avoid unsaturated fats at all times, vegetable oils, yeah, any type of vegetable oil, fish oils, salmon, um, above ground vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, nut seeds, all these different things. Avoid unsaturated fats because candida feeds on unsaturated fats and unsaturated fats in the body have the same action as estrogen in the body. Increase your consumption of non-inflammatory proteins like broth, gelatin, dairy, eggs, white fish, and shellfish, things like that. Increase the amount of root vegetables you're taking in and tropical fruits to actually feed the candida to upregulate metabolism of thyroid and the immune system to control candida. It's not about killing it, it's about controlling it and feeding it and giving it what it exactly needs. Work on your food ratios. Look at your food ratios and frequencies to figure out how many grams of carbs do I need at each meal and at the end of the day. Same thing with proteins and fats. Increase or add in coconut oil to your diet because coconut oil is naturally inflammatory. It's an antihistamine and it actually is a natural antifungal. Think about maintaining blood sugar and you can watch our body temperature and pulse video. Uh, I think I called it Are You Healthy to learn more about that. You can study the work of Broda Barnes. But regulating your blood sugar helps to regulate candida. It's that simple. It's literally that simple. You don't need to do a lab. You can look at your body temperature pulse to find out if you're regulating your metabolism. At the same time, you know, in, in rare cases when people get thrush or when people get ringworm, which is a fungus, and I have to be honest with you, in two, three years, we've probably used it twice. We use food 99.9% .9 of the time. But you can get flowers of sulfur. Flowers of sulfur, it's usually recommended topically. So when people have ringworm, I'll have them take baths in uh, flowers of sulfur, not for a long period of time. Or get a little you know, bin with hot water and a washcloth, put some flowers of sulfur in there, and they can dab it on the ringworm. At the same time, when people get thrush, they can use really small amounts of flowers of sulfur, and they can rinse their mouth with it um, one to two times a day and not do it for long periods of time. So, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed this YouTube clip. Hopefully you un understand a little bit more about candida, what it is homeostatically, what it feeds on, and what we need to do to actually help control it and not eradicate it. I'm out of here.